So, you know, I'm studying and researching for this video review I'm doing of an Incredibles comic book on a request from a friend. And as I'm researching this, I found something that is super cool about the Incredibles timeline. Like, seriously, this is one of the coolest things I think Pixar has done as far as the setup of any of their movies is. So, I mean, I just gotta talk about it. Let me tell you about this. So, if you haven't seen the movie, let me go ahead and just quickly explain, like, the, the premise of the setup of this movie. The first movie starts with a golden age where superheroes are respected, but then as a series of lawsuits take place, it forces all of the superheroes underground. Fifteen years later, events happen and superheroes come into the public eye once again, and it's implied that they're legal again at the end of the movie. Now, what you may not know is that there's a parallel that takes place between that setup of The Incredibles with uh, superheroes being popular, then being illegal, and then being legal again, and then comic book history. So, uh, if you don't know the comic book history, I'll, I'll go ahead and explain it really quickly. Back in the 30s and 40s, uh, specifically the era in which America was involved with World War II, superheroes were extremely popular. And a large part of that had to do with America's identity of being united against the common and very obvious bad guy at the time. But after World War II was over, it, it became a little bit harder to unite the country, it became a little bit harder to find an actual bad guy that people just really hated. And so superheroes started falling out of fashion. This diminishing of superhero popularity continued to a breaking point in 1954 when a psychologist named Friedrich Wertham published a book titled Seduction of the Innocent. Now the premise of this book was that he did a bunch of studies of juvenile delinquents and found that the only thing they had in common was that all of them at some point or another had read a comic book in their lives. There were tons of public demonstrations where people were burning comic books and superhero memorabilia. There were instances of the government having to intervene and they had they even had congressional hearings to determine if the comic book industry should be shut down in America. And through all of this, most small comic book publishers went completely out of business. And most characters from most publishers went very underground, like they stopped getting attention and most of them didn't come back for years. And the characters that were able to stick around, specifically Batman and Superman, almost almost became jokes to try and show the, like a different side to try and keep superheroes relevant, not by addressing public issues like they used to in the 30s and 40s, but by just making them comical kids books. So now we have this parallel. The question is, is this a coincidence? So um, check this out. This, this is where everything starts coming together. The Incredibles is a period piece, but it's also kind of ambiguous as a period piece. We're not 100% sure when it does take place, but we can narrow it down very quickly by thinking of a different Pixar property, Cars. A creative writing teacher once told me that if you want to put a date on your story, you better show either a cell phone or a car. Because those two things very quickly identify the time that a story takes place. And so I looked into it and I looked at what kinds of cars you can find in The Incredibles to try and narrow down a year. Now what did I find? I found that most cars in The Incredibles are 1950s models. And there's a couple of 1960s, and the newest car I could find was a 1970 Chevy Chevelle. Great car. Late 60s, early 70s, that's like, cars were so cool back then. Why do all cars kind of look lame now? So we know now that the earliest the Incredibles battle with Syndrome could possibly happen it's the fall of 1969, but it's likely later than that because 
it, the weather just doesn't look like fall. Unless it takes place in California. Which it might. Huh. So, but for argument's sake, let's say that it does happen in 1970. What happened in 1970 that was so significant? Well, there was a couple of things. First big thing is that 1970 was the first year that the San Diego Comic-Con took place. San Diego Comic-Con is the biggest Comic-Con. That's where all comic book announcements are like really made, where movies are discussed. Like it's the biggest convention. The second thing is that DC, with the help of Neil Adams, created the new Green Lantern, Green Arrow book, Hard Traveling Heroes. And for many people, this, this particular story marked the beginning of the Bronze Age of comics, where superheroes started addressing public issues again, like they did back in the 30s and 40s. They stopped being jokes, they started taking things seriously with that book. So is this a coincidence? Probably. But then something crazy happens when we start turning the clock back. Remember, The Incredibles had a couple of time jumps in it. The first one, moving backwards from the Syndrome fight, is Mr. Incredible has this workout montage where he loses like a ton of weight. And that's not a, that's not a short process. That must have taken at least a couple of months. So all of a sudden our time frame looking at 1970 as the early, as like the latest possible year this movie could take place to like it starts turning back it's closer to 1969. And what do you get when you subtract the 15 year time jump at the beginning of the movie from 1969? That's right, you get 1954 the year Seduction of the Innocent and all of those congressional hearings on comic books took place. Coincidence? I think not! Like, holy cow, this is ridiculous. This is something you have to plan in order to make it work out this well. So to recap, there's a golden age. Superheroes are popular. Everyone loves superheroes. But then, 1954, lawsuits happen. Um, angry demonstrations happen and superheroes are declared illegal in The Incredibles and are declared needing of censorship here in the real world in that year. Fifteen years pass by. During those fifteen years, superheroes are kind of a joke. Uh, a lot of them in The Incredibles die, but in the real world they get forgotten, which is like a fictional character dying, pretty much. And then 15 years later, in, in 1969, 1970, superheroes and the Incredibles are declared legal once again, and in the real world, they are declared serious once again. Anyway, this was just super cool, and this was a fun parallel to go back into and find and read and tear apart, and it was very interesting. And I really enjoyed this. So I want to know what you think. Uh, is, is this really just a coincidence? Can you think of any other connections between the real world and The Incredibles that maybe make this theory maybe a little bit stronger? Do you think I should switch to contacts? I mean, I've been thinking about switching to contacts. But should I switch to contacts? I don't know. I, I don't know. Let's just talk in the comments. Go ahead and put your thoughts in the comments below. And until next time, thank you for joining me. Have a great day, and remember to always be your best self. Oh, this was so cool.